Wow, oh, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we're gonna go over which streaming services are best for artists to use and which ones get you the most money. Quick note, I'm working on cleaning up my format a little bit, so on Friday specifically, I want to go over resources, tools, and sometimes tactics and strategies for artists specifically. You'll see what I mean over time, but for now, let's hop into it. So we'll be using this infographic right here, and if I'm moving too fast, you can always pause it so you can read through things yourself, but first, First, let's start with the artist revenue per play. This is the amount of money you are making on a platform per times you get paid. And if you rank them, Napster is making the most money for an artist, which is crazy because sometimes I forget that Napster even exists. And then if you go second down the line, Tidal makes the most money for an artist per play. And then you have Apple Music, which is 0.0064%. Google is next. Deezer is at 0.0056%. Spotify is 0.0038 all the way down to YouTube at the smallest which is 0 0.0006 cents. If you've been wondering why the record industry has been battling YouTube to get more money that's why. And as an artist you might be thinking cool I'm just gonna go with the platform that makes the most money per play but then you have to consider the amount of people that are on the platform. Like for instance YouTube makes the far least money per play but at the same time they have way 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 more users than anybody else. They have over a billion users. The second largest user base is Spotify and they have over 860 million less users than YouTube. So put that in perspective. But anyway looking at the next larger user base after Spotify you have Pandora at 81 million Apple music 27 million so right there you already got to consider all right I'm making this much on this platform but how many users are on that platform and what user base are they tapping into if you look at a platform like YouTube is worldwide but then you look at a platform like Deezer it's a lot stronger in Europe than it is in other continents and then I speak to people all the time that don't have Spotify going strong in their country like in the islands Spotify is not really heavy right now but even greater than that you actually want to know how user friendly the platform is for an artist but we'll get to that after we talk about money a little bit more so of course a big thing that a lot of artists want is some money and there's this really interesting part of this infographic where it talks about the amount of money that is needed to make minimum wage now they use fourteen hundred and seventy two dollars as the milestone for minimum wage I'm not exactly sure where they got that number from but I need a little bit more money for my hot wings but I think this is a great exercise to put things in perspective it's saying you need 2.4 million streams to make basically $1,500 on YouTube. You need 380,000 streams to make $1,500 on Spotify. You go down to platforms like Apple Music and Deezer, you need 230,000 streams and 260,000 streams respectively. And Napster, of course, makes you the most money per stream, so you need the least amount, which is only 90,000 streams to make $1,500. So to me, what that sounds like is if there's a user base on Napster that actually is applicable to you, whatever your type of music is, I'd be hopping on Napster right now. But what we also have to consider is, once again, the user friendliness of these platforms. Spotify has a great platform and they're always developing when it comes to allowing artists to build a fan base and target them through marketing. There's all types of platforms like Spotify for artists to really plug into your fan base and sell them tickets and things like that. That a lot of you might not be there yet, but it's very user friendly in that sense. And then a platform like Deezer is super useful. They have one of the best ad platforms to reach out, but you have to do it through a third party, which I'll talk about later in another video. So I personally lean on Spotify and Deezer from a user friendly standpoint of being an independent, trying to reach out to people. And you can kind of throw Apple Music in that category, but I'm not an Apple Music expert at this time. But those are really the big three that I would say, hey, use these in terms of streaming services. Now when we talk about YouTube, that's obvious, I almost don't even think about them as a streaming service sometimes, but they actually do have artist specific services and you should look into that too. I might put a few links in the bio on all these things. But when it comes to platforms like Google Play and Pandora, it seems that it really helps for you to have a little bit more of an infrastructure at the end of the day. Being an independent, just starting out, those probably aren't the places that you want to go. 
Oh, and of course, Tidal. My thing with Tidal is overall, I just don't even like their user experience as a consumer, and they really seem to be lagging behind in some of the other services as well. It seems a little bit more hand to hand as opposed to automated computerized, allowing you to really reach out to people. I'm admittedly not a super expert on Tidal either, so if I'm wrong or you have some information out there, somebody let me know about Tidal. As a matter of fact, everybody with every platform that you use, put your personal experience and what you think about it in the comments below. I might go deeper into streaming services another time, but other than that, I'm actually just glad to have this video out of my head. I've been procrastinating for a long period. Thank you for the person that sent me that infographic because it made it a lot, lot easier, but even that was months ago now. It's just a testament to how many videos I actually got lined up that I have not even gotten to yet. But that's it. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.